Alright, so I know that this video is long overdue. People have been asking about this one for a while, and I keep telling them I'm going to do a video, and then it doesn't happen. And Well, today it's going to happen. So we're going to tie the Murdoch Jig Minnow. And this is a simple little pattern that has been really, really catching a lot of fish for me the last couple of years. Uh, catching a lot of, you know, bass, crappies, rock bass, you name it. A little bit of everything. Um, we're going to tie this on a Do It Molds 785 size 6. It's a little, it's like a 35 degree jig hook. Uh, these come in a size 2 and a size 6, and I've used both for this pattern. They both work pretty well. I use 6 the most. So we're just going to use, this is a 6 aught Pink Uni. It's the thread we're using today. I'm going to start by attaching a set of small sized dumbbell eyes, and I try to get these seated so that they are, the front of the eyes is right about the bend in that jig hook. It's a small set of dumbbells, but it really does get this pattern to sink pretty quick. Once I get those where I want them, I like to hit just a little bit of cement on the underside of these just to help make sure they stay put. This is a pretty simple pattern. It's pretty flashy. Um, it only has one natural material in it, and that's what we're going to tie in right now, and that's going to be a little bit of white bucktail. I tend to make the tail on this fly a little bit longer. It's usually about, instead of being about a shank length on the tail material, I usually make it about a shank and a half. It gives this fly a little bit bigger tail, but it doesn't foul. It looks really good in the water. Excess. So the only tricky part about this fly is that you're going to be tying it inverted like this to ride point up and you have to work around the hook point just a little bit. Uh, but other than that it's pretty simple. So I'm going to take a small clump of, this is UV pearl ripple ice fiber. And essentially I've got the butts there in my fingers, the, the length of it going out the back. And I kind of push my fingers down over the hook point catch those tips of that material. Sometimes you don't get them all, but you get most of them. And then just kind of let the thread pull that back down to where the thread stops the bucktail. You kind of have to divide this around the hook point a little bit. Sometimes it takes some manipulation to get the, the fiber to go, the ripple ice to go where you want it. So this, this part, portion of the ripple ice and this part of the tail, I trim this to be about the length of the bucktail. And that's fairly sparse. There's not a whole lot of the UV pearl in there. I take my thread back up to about the halfway point on the shank between the bucktail and the eyes. And this is where we're going to tie in a contrasting color of ripple ice, which in this case is my favorite color of this material, and this is smolt blue. Again, you're going to tie this in kind of by the butts, but this time you're going to want to leave about a shank length of that smolt blue ripple ice sticking forward because you're going to end up folding this back. Again, we're going to work that over the hook point. And this is a little bit heavier bundle of ripple ice on this top color. I've tied this fly in white and olive, yellow and olive, uh, all black works pretty well. But for whatever reason, this white and smolt blue seems to be the number one color in this pattern. It's kind of a cotton candy type color. So once you get all that worked back, I'm going to trim this to be just a little bit longer and a little bit of a shallower angle so that the, the top fibers are just a hair longer. Give it a little bit of a taper. So on the original Murdoch Minnow, they used a, a bigger cheek material here that, that really added some volume to the side of the fly, but I want this to be a little bit thinner and skinny so that it sinks a little bit better. So what I'm going to use for this is actually going to be more of a kind of a hot spot. And this is going to be Bruiser Blend Junior Streamer Dubbing in Shell Pink. Mostly align these fibers, and when they're kind of really elongated like that, I want this to be a little bit stubbier than that. You can just kind of pinch it with your finger, your fingernail, you can kind of break it off to get a little bit stubbier bundle, just like that. I'm going to 
tie this in. And you can see that just extends a little bit past the, the bend of the hook and what it's going to do is just give you a, a little bit of a hot spot right there. If you use red you could say it maybe simulated gills. I don't know what pink simulates but the fish like it so I like to use it. I'll repeat the process on this side of the hook. So you can see right there how you get that bright pink hot spot on each side right there. So now we're going to roll this so that the, the hook point is up. We're going to kind of gather these butts of that smolt blue ripple ice, pull them up, and what you're going to want to do to get a hold of the end of them, and you want to trim this so that the butts of this go to about the end of that streamer dubbing. So I'll trim it right about there. You don't have a whole lot of excess. And then we're going to force this back around the hook point, and it's going to sort of veil over top of that uh, bruiser blend. And again, you kind of have to manipulate this to go around the hook point where you want it. Stuff can be a little bit unruly, but it looks incredible in the water. The fish love it. It's pretty durable too. So now we've got the majority of this fly, the, the difficult part's done. So now we're going to take, this is a streamer brush that I made. This is straight uh, minnow belly colored ice dub. You can do this in a dubbing loop, and this is how I started out doing this fly, but dubbing loops can be tedious. I made this dubbing brush on my machine. It, this one brush will do me, I've already done a couple out of this one. One brush will do four or five flies, and I can do it in about the same time I can do a couple of dubbing loops. So doesn't take a whole lot of time to do it and it makes this part a lot quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this brush in right here towards the end. Come with an old pair of scissors and cut that out. And then I'm just going to go ahead and return the thread up here to the front in front of the dumbbell eyes right behind the hook eye and give it a half inch just to keep the thread there. So now we're just going to wrap this brush pretty tight turns. Uh, if the material wants to run forward a little bit, I'll kind of stroke it back. And don't worry about this kind of looking bound down and having a bunch of fibers trapped because you're going to pick it out in the next step. So we're going to crisscross over the eyes. And I don't worry a whole lot about covering up all around the eyes because you're really never going to notice on this fly. So we're going to catch that dubbing brush right behind the hook eye, give it a couple of turns and then get in front of it and secure it down. Again, we're going to come in with your crappy scissors, trim that out. And if you end up with a little stubble wire, usually you can just take your fingernail and fold that down. So now we can go ahead and whip finish and trim the thread. Now at this point what you've got is sort of a mangled mess. Uh, so what we're going to do is the first step is going to take a bodkin and this is just like a it's a weird medical bodkin that I got as a surgical kit giveaway at work. I work at a medical school. And we're just going to kind of pick this out straight out from the hook shank. You're just kind of trying to free some of the, you don't want to try to free all of that material but you want to free some of it. And you're going to go from having a mangled mess to a poofy mess. Cool thing about this tool is that little bend, it really helps you get into spots. So now you've got essentially a big poof ball of ice stuff. So we need to trim this up, and the first cut that I make is going to come in over the hook eye and come right over the dumbbell eyes. You're going to trim that little little tuft there. And then I like to pick up on the bottom of it and trim flat, flush with those dumbbell eyes. So you end up with a flat cut right across the bottom. You can roll it over. I make the next cut on top. I'll go ahead and draw up that material with my fingers. And then this cut's going to go from the top of the hook eye back to about the middle of my vice jaws. Just like that. 
and sometimes you get a few stragglers that don't quite get cut. And then the next cut is going to be on the side, and I just trim this kind of flush with the the dumbbell eyes. These smaller scissors get in here a little better. So I'm really just uh, trimming this more or less square. And if you want to round it off, you can you can hit the edges and round it off. It really doesn't matter. It's gonna the ice tub's gonna mat down a little bit in the water anyway. So there you've got. It's more like a an ice dub chenille type body is what you end up with. So now to add a little bit of color to make this match the tail, I'm going to use a sharpie and kind of a, it's like a pale blue. It doesn't have an actual color on it. And hit the back of it here. And then color up the top. And this color seems to stick pretty well with this ice tub. It doesn't fade or wash out too badly. And then I like to add just a little bit of barring to the top, so I'll put one little black stripe in front of the eyes, one right behind, and then usually two more. And this is pretty faint, but it does show up in the water. And that's it. That is the Murdoch Jig Minnow. Like I said, this is a size 6. I've tied this in a size 2. I've tied it down to a smaller uh, jig style hook in a size 8, uh, which also works pretty well, but this is kind of the, the standard color I tie most of the time, standard size, so that's the fly. It's small enough that I cast it on a glass 3 weight, uh, but it does get down pretty well with those dumbbell eyes kind of towards the front. It makes it dive a little bit. It gets a strong jigging action. Uh, crappies, smallmouth, spotted bass, largemouth, uh, pretty much anything that eats a minnow. I caught a big gar on this thing last summer here in Ohio. So, uh, about anything that'll eat a minnow is going to eat this. So, good luck. Give it a shot. Let me know if you do any good.